Welcome to Roll For It. It's a D&D podcast of random monsters and epic adventures. Each episode, we will roll a D100 to determine which monster we will encounter. This season, every monster is woven into a tale set at sea. Yarr! We also level up every episode, so our characters will get to test out cool new magic and abilities as we face tougher challenges. Whether you're brand new to the game or a D&D veteran, thank you for tuning in to Roll, Roll for, for it. it. Welcome to Roll For It. This is episode five. This is Cinco. Halfway. This is like the mid-season finale right here. So tune in six months later when we yeah, finish yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2013, we're going to release the rest of it. 2013. Oh, I'm sorry. 23. Here we are. Oh, my God. I was thinking Guys, 23. welcome to 2010. I'm a decade behind. It's not that bad. Okay. Actually, we are taking a one-week break for our mid-season finale. Episode 6 of Season 3 is going to come out March 8th for patrons and March 11th for everybody else. So check it out then. Did you guys have a chance to listen to our Pizza Time theme song? Yes. Oh, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Died. Sure. The capital P to capital. the capital T. <laughs> I was like, this is, I'm not cutting this. this is, <laughs> it's my favorite. It part. was an absolute perfect piece of art. For sure. Good job, fam. Who am I sitting here with? Let's introduce ourselves starting on my left. I always go first. Yeah, it's okay. Starting on my right. I feel like I always go first. Uh huh. Uh huh. I will take the mantle. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I am Lee Royal. I am playing Kanar, looking to see if we could change the fate of this moon elf beast master ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. I am Kelsey, and I am playing Mo, a Tavaxi rogue mastermind she got lost at sea just trying to get back home hey everyone i'm lexi i play euphoria or eua for short i'm a tiefling artificer and i'm a little bit british maybe yeah we have quite a few people from the uk that follow us and our patrons they're probably mad at me she's it's not european she's monrethian right. yeah i'm monrethian yeah, and we speak, speak fancy yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fancy speak. fancy speak it's not rooms and dragoons <laughs> i'm jake i'm the dungeon master I'm going to be controlling like the monsters, the NPCs, and the universe that's not these three that are making choices inside it. So tune in. And they are tuned in there. Keep tuning in. Don't yeah, leave. Stay Don't tune out. Don't, Don't so tune out. Stay tuned now <laughs> because we are going to encounter this episode, monster number 50 on our list of 100. We rolled it at random. We're going to find out what it is. We're at level five now too, right? We leveled up because we level up every episode. Level episode five, five, level five. What do you guys got? What's new? I have uncanny dodge. Uncanny so now dodge, uncanny dodge, if I can see dodge. something coming at me, I can dodge out of its way and only take half damage. So good. I, I hate it. It's so good. It's so good. Leroy, what'd you get? Oh, uh, I got an extra attack. And not only that, I learned a new spell, Hail of Thorns. So I got Flaming Sphere and Melf's Acid Arrow. And previously on Roll For It, Captain Mo, Kanar, and Euphoria discovered a brand new crew member, Burnt Bill, aboard their brand new vessel, the Adventurer's Mark. Then they stopped in at a large, bustling city for supplies, where they also learned that Yue is being framed for the murder of her beloved mentor, King Oigrin when their ship passed through a cloud of magical fog linked to the Feywild. The mist filled Yue's slumber with terrifying nightmares. Fey creatures, mean locks, attacked the ship from within, drawn to Yue's fear. The party hunted the evil creatures down, with Mo attempting to use Yue's wanted poster as a way to inspire enough fear to catch the remaining mean lock out in the open. Sorry. Yue did not like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Shaken from the experience, the group now continues the journey for their three wishes. Throughout the last few days of travel on the Wild Sea, Kanar and Yue have been working on various inventions in the captain's cabin. Mo, you are steering the ship when you hear another bickering match from below. I'm busy. I don't have the magic. I have my own thing. Make this go. Guys, but no, I don't want to. Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm trying to explain to you, Wade, that I was thinking making additions to the ship. Do we need things to be different about the boat? It works really well. I got one specifically for you. For me? You don't like water. Imagine this. Oh, God. A glass shield over the poop deck. 
<laughs> that way water can never get in. I'm just trying to get back to my island. How and would I'm you worried. like to get to the island faster? Picture this. <laughs> <laughs> Barrels on the side of the ship filled with my rare frost cantrip. That way, when we need to make a quick escape, no Wouldn't one can follow us. Freeze yeah, the I, water I'm that sure. we're sailing. It's in the back. We, we only going forward. Well, okay. So I am trying my best these days to be a supportive member of this family. So and it shows, and I appreciate you that. You can make whatever you want to make. Just please don't sink the boat. Please don't sink the boat. Can I look at me? Huh? Please don't, don't sink, sink the ship. The sh- this the is ship. a ship, not a boat. You wait. What are you doing over there? You doing like boat stuff too? You keeping an eye on this one? Uh, I will 100% do boat stuff later. I don't know why that sounds sexual, but I'll do boat (laughs) stuff later. I wasn't going to say anything. I was going to let you have it. I was going to let you have it. Boat stuff. Uh, But I'm finishing a little charm bracelet I'm working on, so. I didn't see you as an artsy craftsman. Um, Is this a friendship charm bracelet? No, it's just for me. Uh, Why are you making a charm bracelet? It's for the souls of my enemies. Holy (laughs) shit. Is that more character driven? Uh, (laughs) Character driven. You guys do your tinker talks. Burnt Bill and I are going to stop and get us food. Great. Uh, Thanks, Mo. I need a whole lot of supplies to make the ship of our dreams. So. Right, the ship that's still going to it's, sail it's and not still sink. Gonna sail. Cannot, let's make a list so that we can get this done properly. So Burnt Bill goes up to you, Captain Mo, and tells you about the next port. We reach New Undouche by sun up next, <laughs> Captain <laughs> Jacob, what? What, what is know. that city? The New, new Indus? New Indus is the country. The nation was first officially named after the Munrithians attempted to claim the land as their own. Locals chose Undush, the Munrithian name for monster. So that the Munrithians would know. Would, leave, would know not to go there. It's New Indus. It's what? New Indus. New Dus. Undush. Undush. The town be named like a lass, methinks. Sylvia Town. I don't understand much of what you say, but I appreciate you, and I l- really like you. Captain, you're the captain, so take me words as you please. Okay. We're carrying a fugitive. 10,000 doubloons today is worth an owlbear's shit ton more than three wishes tomorrow. And he gestures for the captain's cabin at the back of the ship. Old Purpley down there is worth 10,000 today, Captain. Food for thoughts all. I'll man the jib. And Mo's like speechless because up until that moment, Burnt Bill was her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, Kanar and Yue have this little buddy buddy thing going on. And now she's like, fuck, he's a pirate. Like, it was a very sharp reminder to Mo that this man is a dangerous pirate. And she also realizes that she doesn't know why his name is Burnt Bill. He doesn't have any burns on his skin. So that starts to creep her out a little bit. (laughs) So she spends the rest of her time playing checkers with Durbin until they get there. So you guys approach Sylvia Town early the next morning. It is on a mountainous coastline and only a few buildings are visible as a steep slope upward hides the rest. The dock is small, and as you approach, a half-orc with a round belly waves you in, and he says, Come on, then. Do you need food and supplies? Back there just a bit, I've got some dried meat and some greens. And uh, if you're ready to go, reckon the best time of day is just to hop back on the sea, innit? Uh, yeah, that's easy and convenient. I guess no, we'll no, take no, the... No, no, no. I need lumber for the upgrades for the ship. Which what? use the captain is it? It's me. Captain Cat, you should get a hat because I didn't know between the lot of you which one was... I have big ears and if I cover them up with a hat, I don't hear very well. You know what? I might have a captain set here. You notice he has a large backpack on and it's overflowing with gear and he's wearing many layers of clothing, more than would seem necessary, even with the morning chill. And he pulls out a captain's hat and he... Poof, dust it off yep here it is it's a bit old-fashioned but it's nice um you know what i have another one i have another one this one's a bit more modern with that sheen look take your pick between the two helpful. tell you what you get both hats if we can leave in 10 minutes wait mo should we check this guy <laughs> we yeah, should perception check. Everybody, <laughs> calm down why are we in such a hurry we followed all the rules we haven't done anything wrong nothing right? here for us anymore but uh death and despair and monsters oh so i mean what oh you're trying to come with us Oh, I thought that was implied. What if we 
get rid of this monster? Is there payment for that? Yeah, they could probably throw some gold together for you, but not enough to bring any adventurers through town so far. Euphoria, why do we need more money? Because you keep spending mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Describe this monster to us. So nobody's actually seen it. It wraps stuff up in like a cocoon. It's taken some buildings before and... Wrap them in what? Uh, web? Webbing? Oh. Webbing. Mm. So it's this... Spider? Oh. You would think so, right? Are you okay, You would Kanaan? hope that'd be the simple answer. Wait. I forgot you did say before that you don't like spiders, didn't you? When did he say Or wait, that? is it a loyal thing? Or it's a thing? royal thing. Oh, no. <laughs> in, in all cases, I hate spiders oh, so no. much. No. Okay. okay, okay. You don't know for sure it's a spider. You just know there's a building covered in web. Covered if in web. If Euphoria would mm -hmm. like to fight a monster for money as her friend, I will support her in such endeavor. Can I have the the newer hat, please? Uh, yeah. Here you are. Durbin, come here. I want you to bite here and here. Okay. Be very precise with it. Be very Durbin. Durbin so tears two slightly large holes in the sides of the captain's hat. What is a slightly large? <laughs> it's, it's, it's medium. <laughs> it's a medium sized hole. She just pokes her little ears through the holes. Mm -hmm. So now she can hear and she can wear a captain's hat. Aww. And with her newfound confidence from her little hat, she marches up the steps. Looks loads better than I thought it would look. I don't like you. <laughs> And then she goes to check on the monster. Uh, Bert Bale, can you make sure that this guy doesn't take our ship, please? We'll stay with the ship. <laughs> Thank you. Just up a rock path into the rest of town, you see a scattered crowd of worried faces gathered around a large building. No one is getting any closer than 50 feet, and it's easy to see why. The building, the exact shape of which is impossible to determine, is coated in what must be hundreds of layers of thick webbing. Small spiders crawl over the web, mostly heading towards the building. The creature's taken the guild house. The sheriff was in there, along with God knows who else. Screams woke us up just an hour ago. Is he still in there? Nothing's come out. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I'm Mo, by the way. Who are you? <laughs> come up with a name. Do it, do, do it, it. Yeah, do come it, up with do a name. it, do it. I'm Lilith. Well, Lilith. We were going to put a stop to it. Burn the building down right now. Catch the creature inside. Yes. But there's and people we're done. in there. Oh. Have you been trying to fight this thing at all? Has anything worked? Not worked? As you say that, you look around you and see that a few folks with torches are approaching the perimeter of the web. Mo jumps in front of that building. Hold on, crazy people. You cannot just burn down a building with people in it. That's nuts. So. Mo, Mo. Love they've, your they've probably been dead for hours in there. <laughs> no, there's people in there. Like, am I? I just, I feel like I'm losing my mind. You can't do that. I think we should be a bit quieter. Love this conversation, but let's just take it down so the thing doesn't hear you us. You can't burn people alive. She's whisper yelling. I know, I know. I appreciate it. And then you guys hear shouting from inside the building. Clearly still alive. Mo has a point. Alive. <laughs> alive. Guys, alive. I think the whispering thing can be done if they're shouting. We don't have to whisper anymore. <laughs> okay, then do not burn your sheriff alive because here's the other thing. If that's your sheriff, who's going to arrest this monster? <laughs> <laughs> Yue and Kanar look at each other, both very confused looks as confused. to why somebody would arrest the monster. <laughs> So the screaming from inside, it's multiple voices, at least three distinct voices, <laughs> shouting for help. You lot look capable enough. We haven't been able to offer much in the way of gold, but all we have is yours if you can stop the creature and save our people. Okay, do you have any wood? No, no, uh, we'll take all you have. That sounds great. Oh no, Durbin, don't eat that. Don't, Durbin's trying to eat the spiders. Did we feed him last night? It's not my job. Yeah, he had eggs. It's all good. Okay. As you guys approach this building, it's two stories high. There's a front door straight ahead of you on a very small porch. I would love to know what direction those screams were coming from. The screams are coming from above. They're on the second floor, you guys. So Kanar starts dousing his arrows, the tin in poison, just to get okay. ready to go in. Stuff that Kanar recovered from the corpses of the Meanlocks last episode. <laughs> yeah. I would say fire might work too. I take my staff with the little hot smelting pot on it filled with Cheeto dust. And there's like a little tiny flame, so I like flame our path. So I think we should split up. <laughs> it's a bad idea. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it can work. I was going to scale the side of this wall and go through a second-story window. Take Durbin with you. What? Take Durbin. 
Durbin's oh, a yeah, great Durbin climber. Durbin does panther stats. And he, he fights on his own. <laughs> he will be your companion for now. Durbin, go help Mo. And in the meantime, you two are going to what? I mean, I feel like that's the last thing something would expect is to go through the front door. <laughs> Right. But let's stealthily approach it, not to right. disturb yeah. the webbing anymore. Yeah, go ahead. Stealth check. Okay, well, great. So the two of you are burning through the webbing on the floor to reach the front porch. A UA, you light a little bit too large of a fire. Shit. So you stomp it out. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We're here. You guys have reached the door now. I'm going to peek in before I just open the door all the way and use my dark vision to hopefully see something that's behind this All right, door. go ahead and make a perception check. <laughs> Puts me at a 23. 23 perception. All wow. right. Whoa, you know what you you're see. Very perceptive. Yeah. While Lay Royal is doing that, I take one of his arrows out of his little thing. So poison. What? It's poison. Poison. Great. I'm gonna modify it. Make it acid. <laughs> Just cooler. <laughs> right. It's way cooler. <laughs> Kanar, you look in with your 23 perception. You see the dining room. Chairs are toppled over. The table has actually been broken from some kind of struggle. There's almost everything in here is covered in webbing. You also see the stairs leading up to the second floor. And hanging from the stairs, two large cocoons. Ugh. You see a purplish black creature slither down from the second floor along the ceiling. And the creature is... An etter cap. Etter cap. Etter cap. <laughs> Durr, etter. Etter. E T T E R C A P. An etter cap is a humanoid spider creature. It's Ugh. it's got like the torso of a spider, but only like two arms and two legs. And I'm gonna show you guys a picture of it. It's See, guys, it's a humanoid. It could totally be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing could be cuffed for sure. So, do you see anything? Can you describe it to me? It stands up on two feet. It has hands, I guess, like little. Spider How many tins. eyes does it have? Two. Two black eyes, much like yours. Oh, twins. <laughs> In the meantime, Mo and Durbin, you guys are climbing up the webbing on either side of that window. Just above it is another one of these creatures, an etter cap. So it's outside the window. It's hanging it's out in the web. It's staring right at you. What? So the etter cap leaps to strike Mo, and all four of us are going to roll initiative. Guys, my rolls have been absolute crap today. <laughs> Switch the other dice. I got a four. <laughs> I got a 12. Yeah, I got a two. First up is the etter cap. Sorry, cool. guys. Sorry, guys. Great. <laughs> and it swings down and <laughs> slashes at Mo with its claws. Uh, you yourself swing out of the way and dodge the attack. Holy but Durbin, what is that? Its big, weird, spidery, humanoid head comes around and tries to bite you mm. on the neck. So the bite is going to hit with nine piercing damage and Ow. three poison damage. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Guys, if these things hit me, I'm going to die. So I got an eight. You are poisoned. I'm down, Derp. <laughs> You're poisoned, which is basically a big old fuzzy headache for the rest of this fight. Did you say fuzzy because I'm a cat? Because that's rude. <laughs> it means your vision is a little bit blurred and fuzzy. Okay. A poison creature has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Rude. I'm going to take my rapier out of my belt and jab it towards its neck. Make your attack roll. With disadvantage. Oh. Mm. Your rapier just... Stabs into the side of the building. How far am I from the window? About five feet. I'm just going to go through the window. So you disengage from the creature. Oh, yeah, I disengage. With your cunning action. Right when you reach it, the spear just shatters through and out towards you. What the fuck is going on in this house? <laughs> and you look in and you see a uh, red tiefling. And then he sees you and he's like, oh, I thought you were the creature. And then he offers out a hand to help you in through the window. <sighs> Thanks, buddy. Um, We're just... I give any info. Please info. Let's go info. Also, my donkey's outside, so I'm just going to watch him, make sure he doesn't die while you talk. Oh, Durbin follows. Wait, one second. And I turn around and just pull a full-size mule through the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, he's getting chonkier. Okay. <laughs> so you're in a room, actually, three people in this room with oh. you. This tiefling, a high elf with some markings on her face and shoulders, and you see a dwarf dressed in like a nice jacket. As soon as you come in through the window, the dwarf and the high elf slide a bookcase in front of it. The editor cap just starts pounding on it from the other side. The tiefling has like a deep red skin and horns that are right from his forehead at the front of his face. And he's got white hair pulled back into like a straight man bun situation. And he's got a neat 
trim goatee. Jake sets like unrealistic beauty standards for fantasy characters <laughs> with the pictures he pulls off the internet. I'm Osron. I'm the sheriff here. This is Durbin. He's a panther. More on that later. <laughs> Who are you guys? You're the sheriff. These guys are deputies, I assume. My name's Arist. The high elf nods at you. Like aristocrats. Then the dwarf pipes up and says, Berman. Your name is Bourbon? Oh, buddy, we're going to get along. I like you already. (laughs) Okay. And then Bourbon gestures onto the ground where you see mostly wrapped up cocoons of two other people. That's Herman and that's Briggs. Are they alive? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Herman, Bourbon, and Durbin. The three (laughs) best friends you can have. (laughs) They seem fine. Briggs is already waking up. There's at least two of them here. Yeah, I saw one outside. (laughs) And I have two friends who are downstairs who, fingers crossed, still breathing. Okay, back downstairs. The editor cab spreads its forelimbs out along the ceiling and uses one to unclip one of the cocoons that are hanging over the stairway, Mm -hmm. throws it over its side, and then crawls past you and towards the kitchen. What's it doing? It basically has a hostage on its back now. It's going to the kitchen. Oh, it's making a snack. We have to be hurry. Yeah, let's be hurry. (laughs) (laughs) So this, this is what I need. Um, what do you need? You're not gonna like it. Um... I need you to cut down the other hanging cocoon, take them outside while I engage with this one. Then why wouldn't I like that? I get to run away. This is great. (laughs) Well, just come back when when you're done. Oh, okay. I have to do that. Um, well, this is a great plan. We're planning ahead. That's right. Like, we don't do this. Then I just yell, hey! (laughs) (laughs) So it turns to you. And, and I say, eat this, and I shoot two arrows. Are you using the poison ones? Yes, go for it. Yeah, I'm going to use two poisons. Two hits. I'm strong. <laughs> I rolled a nat one. All right. This creature, its limbs extend towards you, and then it drops the massive web off of its back, falls over forwards, and just hits into the ground. It is paralyzed. So now I'm going to tactical roll to land just behind it next to the uh, cocoon body. Your roll sort of gets a little bit slowed down as you get in some web on your way up. He just Dang becomes it. a snowball <laughs> of Dang web. It. Clumsy, clumsy canard. <laughs> well, 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 no, as I roll, I uh, uh, separate my bow to, to sword form. Okay. So I can cut the webbing as gotcha. I roll. Gotcha. Yeah. Like a Sonic the Hedgehog roll, kind yeah, of, absolutely. Just like oh a damage dealing metal Sonic, roll. just yeah. cutting through. You're Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, Yue, what's up with you? Great, hey. we had a plan. I take out my little knife that I threatened uh, Mo with back in episode one. <laughs> the Mo and threatening knife. The Mo, yeah. the Mo knife. Knot, do you still want me to grab this thing? Is it dead? What happened? Stab it. I can stab it. I have a little knife. I call it Mo's knife. <laughs> you threatened him with a That's knife true. You threatened Oh, wait, shit, with yeah. Nope, you were just knife. in the same room it's, it's with me, but I'm going to call knife. it Mo's knife. <laughs> You wait, I think I think we should rescue. Rescue should be should take precedence. Are you sure? All right. Uh, I make a little run, I'm like whoosh, 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 and I start sawing away at those web things. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll against this webbing. Finally. Yeah, something I got good. A nat twenty, so oh. I'm very excited. It's like a spotlight just kinda like shines on me. My hair looks so silky, gorgeous. <laughs> right? And the webbing is just so immersed in my beauty. Once I touch it with the knife, it's just like, thank you. And it falls apart. <laughs> and then the body falls right onto your shoulder. Yeah, because uh, I'm luckily, strong. Yeah, you're super buff. And then I'm gonna run out. The room's small enough that you do make it just out of the front door. Great. And then we're going to switch back over to Mo and Durbin and the gang. That thing is still outside the window, huh? Boom, boom. A claw reaches through the wood in the bookcase, trying to grab at something. I'm going to take my rapier and I'm going to stick it through his hand. And the goal is that I have control of his hands so that he can't move away from the window. I guess since it can't see you. That would be... A sneak attack, oh. and I get 4d6 damage. Well, so. first you got to hit, but you have really good odds to hit because you're rolling with advantage. Okay, you guys, I got a three and a five. You hit the side of the arm, but you don't stab through it, and then it pulls back out, and you see its face looking in at the four of you. Derp, claw that mofo's face. Oof! 18 for derbs. Nice. Four damage as he slashes at this editor cap's face. Good boy, derbs. This creature is going to make a final attack at this bookcase here, see if he can break through it. So this bookcase is, uh, and the spider leaps through and is going to attack Mo. Why? Do you want to not be the one that's attacked? Okay, we'll attack Osron. No, <laughs> now I 
like just a, a civilian. <laughs> Azran's up front. It no, makes the most sense. He's this sheriff. header cap is going to try and bite him and roll a natural one. Awesome. Oh. All right. That's my second nat one. Uh, these spiders, man, unlucky. Azran uses his spear to block it and then <coughs> launches the creature to the side. It just <laughs> rolls over through the bed and then it is... Back to downstairs, the Edder Cap is going to try to not be paralyzed anymore under yeah. the poison of Kanar. Yeah, good luck. 11, just what he wanted, right? Hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> you were so cocky, you were like, good luck. It was an 11, like. It starts to move its claws and turn to see you above it with your two swords drawn. All right, so I'm gonna do my bonus action in Hail of Thorns while also shooting uh, my bow and arrow. 21 damage. 21 from the two hits? Yep. Did you do the Hail of Thorns damage yet? No. <laughs> Holy hell. I'm not gonna have to do anything. I love this. Level five. I'm jumping into the air, eagle eye right on the back of its neck. As I release, you hear the sound of a nice lightning bolt. <laughs> all the way down to the back of this thing's neck. The poison arrows, mind you, they transform into the thorns and it rains down onto this yeah, spider dude. creature. That's so cool. The creature is just full of holes, but it is still just barely alive. What? It has <laughs> taken 39 damage. And I sound there like <laughs> shooting arrows in the air and I uh, can't hit its hand from a bookcase. I'm going to pick up the cocoon next to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leap over this thing so that the cocoon is just right outside the door. Perfect. I'm, I'm holding the cocoon and I set it down and I do a quick investigation check to see if I can release whatever is inside or if I should. Uh, I got a five. Uh, I look at the village people, I go, just don't touch it, leave it alone. It could be your friend, I don't know. Uh, just leave it alone, stand back please. And burn I, it, burn <laughs> it. No, it could be your friend. Oh gosh, I don't know if I should leave it with these people or not. Um, I'm gonna take my knife. I have really cool spells. And I don't get to Go use, use your spells. No, it's fine. I'm gonna help the people. <laughs> I don't even like people. Um, I'm gonna take my Mo knife and I'm going to split it open. So you cut through the webbing mm -hmm. and you reveal the head of a half orc. Hey, buddy. Is it attached to his body or is <laughs> it just, just. Oh my god. What the hell is this thing? <laughs> a soundly sleeping half orc dude. Great. I have a bonus action. So I'm going to use healing word on this. So I take out my weed. I inhale. And as I exhale, the smoke blows words that says, I did a good job healing you. <laughs> his eyes actually open up slowly. He smiles up at you. Like, oh, do you think I'm pretty? <laughs> <laughs> so I still have movement. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back inside. Back to upstairs. The editor cap, after getting launched over to the other side of the room by Osron, it is going to leap to its feet and attack Mo this time. Ooh, so it is going to hit you with its claws for, for slashing damage. I'm gonna dodge out of the way. Uncanny so dodge? Yeah. Cut that down to two. Good job, bud. That was a good hit. Yeah, except uh, it also has a bite, remember? Oh, okay, wait, I did not uncanny dodge. It happened. No. You uncanny dodged it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I forgot it. I didn't know it had a bite. But you just give it a quick bow to the neck, and it's unable to get you. It's towering over you with its crazy limbs right up next to you. I'm going to wrap my tail around his neck Whoa. and swing up so I'm standing on his shoulders. Nice. And then I'm going to take my rapier and jam it into the top of his head. Yeah. So that's going to be a 24. Yay. Also, yeah. since Osron's right there and Durbin's right there, you're going to land your sneak attack damage as well. So that's 15 damage. It has taken 19 damage as you stab through its head into its chest with the rapier. I'm going to jump from this guy's shoulders onto Durbin's back. Do your worst, Derb. And he's going to go up on his two hind legs and come down on that thing with his yeah. giant hooves. This is the coolest With his move. claws. Yeah. All right. With his claws. Osron's going to also make a strike on him with his spear. Ooh. The thing is very, very hurt now. Nice. You guys are doing great. I love today. <laughs> and Osron says, everyone take a swing. Erist is going to take out a bow and fire from the other side of the room. Get him. Three Get him. damage. Get him. It's a race You're to dead. see who can kill this thing first. The six people upstairs or Kanar downstairs. 
Somebody get me a pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> the dwarf is going to grab a fragment of the wood from the bookshelf and swing it as a club. I like these people. The thing is so close to dead and not dead. Aww. It's going to be Kanar's turn downstairs. Wait. What? Uh, 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 uh. Who wants to go back downstairs to their families right now? Raise your hand. Everybody in the room raises their hand. Including the spider. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'd love to see my wife. <laughs> And the dwarf that's wrapped up in the cocoon like shakes a little bit in effort to try and try and get his arm up. Okay, so I take cocoon dwarf, I put him in the arms of other dwarf, and I say, Durbin, be polite. And he bows down. <laughs> he bows down. Is your turn over the yet? Dwarf- <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? The dwarves get on, and I say, Durbin, carry them to safety out the window. Kanar, downstairs, mm-hmm. the editor cap. Mm-hmm. With his single digit remaining hit points, he's going to stumble his way over towards the door and attack. Balls. I rolled a 16. What's your armor class? Wow. It's a 15. So, <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah, just four piercing damage. I'm going to have you make a constitution save against the poison. 16. Your vision blurs for half a second, but you snap right out of it. And the editor cap is finished, which means it's your turn now, right in front of this creature. Yeah, right. finish him off. I'm going to break my bow part in okay. sword, sword form. Hold on to your butts, everybody, because this is about to get bloody. <laughs> I put both my hands on my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 16 and a 21. So I take my two swords, and I'm going to slash off the arms of this thing oh with the God. up swipe. And then I'm also going to extra attack. Slice this bad boy's head off right across his neck, crossing my arms. The two of you in the doorway are just sprayed with this green black blood over your faces and your arms. You better hope these people have soap. I want to gather some more of the poison from this spider uh, into my vial to replenish. You can literally take it off my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> So you immediately go up to this thing's head that's now severed and just start pouring it out into your newly empty vial. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick perception check to make sure that that was the last thing that's down here. You hear a sound, sort of like a chewing and a slurping from the kitchen behind a door that's closed and also there's webbing covering it. Uh. Oh no, I think we just killed the babies. We didn't kill the queen. Kana, hmm? there's something else in here. It's going like... <laughs> It's barely gross, and I think it's eating and slurping blood. I'm gonna do a little something, okay? Okay. So I took one of your arrows earlier. I owe you one. I love you. Okay, and I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) There was more just like a- You get an attachment. I get it. I get it. It's all good. Shut up. I'm stressed now. I'm sweating. Anyways, I took one of your arrows and basically do this like magical, almost like I have my own bow. And mouth acid arrow. The arrow shoots out once I release my hands and travels around the kitchen and goes under the door. So you shoot under the door. Lexi, what if it's just a person? It's legit slurping and like- you know what? If it's a person, bye. I don't have morals. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and make your attack roll. And I guess you'll take disadvantage because you don't see what you're aiming at. You're just okay, going wait, off of hold sound. On. I'm stressed out. This is like a it's child. Not, I don't think it's going to be a child. Kids are loud the, at eating because too. Because the other spider was bringing the, I don't know what that thing Cocoon. is called. Cocoon to it. I'm going to be on your side. If I kill a child, guys, <laughs> UA is going to go down a deep hole. And I'm already halfway there. <laughs> Your arrow flies under the door. Please don't say I murdered somebody. So you hear. <laughs> God damn it, Lexi! I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! Uh, and you still have your movement. What would you like to do? I run to the door and I open it. <laughs> you see a child. No, you don't. <laughs> but you do see a halfling. Oh, uh, the same thing. You freaking So then I see Sam. the halfling almost dying, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I'm going to spare the dying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please let me leave. <laughs> so Kelsey doesn't kill me. Unreal. I'm so red right now. <laughs> I don't know if you could see, but I'm like sweating. What was he eating? <laughs> he's in the pantry. It's this small little cupboard that he's locked himself in, and he's surrounded by like barrels of food, and there's wrappers <laughs> all over him. Oh, I like infected all their He's food. just been in here stress asshole. eating, and uh, now he's steaming with this acid that has splashed <laughs> all over his body. God. As soon as you get in there, he's like running back and forth and he collapses over. I take a vial out that has daisies in it. I'm like, this is the nicest thing I have on my person. And I put it on my hand and I smash it and I put it on him and I go, you will not die. 
<laughs> and then he doesn't die. <laughs> so the daisy actually has a chemical in it that works as a base for the acid. And oh. these wounds close over and you just hear like a whimpering like... And then you just exit and close the door. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I do. I'm like, guys, I got it. Yue, as soon as you back into the kitchen, you feel webbing close around your neck. Oh, fuck me. The third editor cap has crept up behind you. And rolled a natural one. Oh. My third of the night. The spider just falls onto its back. Can it do something like really stupid because it was a natural one? <laughs> what? Fart. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Great. And fart. <laughs> We're going back upstairs now. There is an editor cat there with very few hit points. Mo puts her foot on this spider, puts his hands behind his back, and says, you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. You're going to grapple the editor cap? Yeah, I take handcuffs from the back pocket of Osron. Make a slate of hand check as you swipe these handcuffs from Osron and try to cuff this creature. I believe that's a 22. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> the editor cap is cuffed. <laughs> I know my rights. <laughs> and I look at Osron and I say, hey, Osron, you single? Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, have just I don't understand the context of this question. I just, there's someone downstairs who I think that you should meet. Kanar. She's waited a long time to meet somebody. How many soldiers do you have down there? I have one really hot one <laughs> and a kid. <laughs> so, two? I have... Three people in need of rescue still down there. There's a half-orc deputy, mm -hmm. a half-elf, and there's also a halfling. Name him Nugget. Just, yeah, please name him Nugget. Named Rolwick, hmm. but we call him Nugget. Yay. <laughs> okay. Urist, can you and Herman make it out? I whistled to Durbin out the window. I got two more for you, Derp, and then I run. Wait, wait. Thank you for your help. You've saved us. Okay. And then she runs down the stairs. Mo's just like uncomfortable with any kind of positive feedback. UA, guess what? I did something bad. Can we come back to that? Because I have some exciting news. I have horrible news. I feel so bad about myself. I'm kind of. Are we not going to focus on this okay. last no. image? Shh, shh, shh. Me first. I'm, I'm at cry. a guy upstairs, but he has <laughs> horns, UA, and he's so hot. What? There's a guy with horns like you. Way, and he's so I don't think this should take uh, the importance right now. Kanar, you are up. This spider is stumbling <laughs> to get to its feet after being knocked over by a, a distressed UA. <laughs> <laughs> and it's standing right between the two girls who are not understanding each other at all. I see that there's a giant spider in between them just talking over him. You know what? And he pulls out two more poison arrows. Hey, I got a 20! A nat 20? Nat 20. Nice. Critical hit. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. So the arrows land one inch apart from each other, but the one that critted pierces through the other side, and there's a quick geyser of blood from its chest <laughs> over UA again. I'm having a really hard day. If you could just get me a washcloth. The thing is bloodied. And poison. The poison I saved against. So he's not paralyzed. Nah, nah. <laughs> you a bastard. Okay. UA, you are up. I am going to use my ray of sickness. I place both my hands over my face, drag the gross green blood and webs off of it, and I mix it together in my hands real quick, and I go, uh. you're going to be disgusted just as much as I am. Three plus points because I'm an alchemical savant. Jake, <laughs> say it for me. Your new alchemical savant ability means you get to add three bonuses bonus damage on top of everything else because it's a uh, poison effect. I'm going to call that A-S, like ass. Okay. Add your ass damage. Yeah, look at that. I finally did something right. This blood and guts and acid and daisies collection that you've scraped <laughs> off yourself glows with this bright green as you cast this spell and shoots the thing in the face and the thing just starts to steam and shake and it just slumps over and collapses on the ground dead. Guys, um, uh, 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 excuse me, and I open up the pantry door, and then I'm gonna cast another spell. You ate, like, who it's is a that? Lot. It's a mistake! And then <laughs> I smoke my healing word. Is that Nugget? I don't know. It kind of looks like a Nugget. <laughs> nugget wakes up with a start and just, ah, ah, ah. It's a little small thing, don't you You wake up touching him. I don't know <laughs> what to do. I've never comforted anybody And then he feels life. around, and he's not burning. 
so sorry. You remember the thing that attacked you was an arrow from a spider. <laughs> <laughs> Nugget. Normally I go by roll with. I want you to go to the door and roll like there's a one of your friends. So just roll him out the door. Get him to safety, please. Right away, Captain. <laughs> is that? He knows. Is that? Is that? <laughs> and he puts his hand on your shoulder, UA, and he's like, it's going to be all right. What's wrong with her? I just, I just I'm okay. She's Thank afraid you. of spiders. Yeah, Don't worry about it. All right. I'm going to roll this guy. I look back to Mo and I go, do you have a napkin? <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure out if this situation is done, you guys. Well, Maybe. I arrested one of them upstairs. <laughs> the sheriff is leading him down the stairs. And <laughs> yeah. And as soon as I see this hot tiefling, I'm like, I told you. I look like absolute shit. As he's heading out the door, you see his eyes linger on you for longer than you'd expect. <gasps> um, Azaron, come here. Remember me? I who saved your life? Come here. He sort of gestures at the editor cap in front of him and like shrugs. Like, Bring him Mo, with you. Mo, Bring him Mo, with you. We'll do this after. Let's just finish <laughs> this. All right. I think All we right. should do it after. Okay. I want to check the area, make sure there's nothing else that's going to come out of the woodworks after us. From the kitchen, there are these stone steps leading underground. Mm. Guys, we got to see if there's like a basement downstairs. There's something else here. So I guess we should just all go down there. We're just going to check downstairs. We'll be right back. We'll, we'll hold hands. I so know we that's can... what you're leading to. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Are you just okay, a little bit jealous right now? Too. We'll check. If it's bad, we run yes. and torch this place. Great. I guarantee it's eggs. With your dark vision, you guys are looking at eggs. Let's torch it. Okay, everybody <laughs> upstairs. We run outside, and I say, now that everyone's out of the building, we're going to burn it, because that's how civilization works. <laughs> everybody back up a few feet, please. And then I let UA do her thing. Kanar, would you like to put the hot Cheetos into my pot? So Kanar takes the hot Cheetos and, like, crunches them up to, like, <laughs> oh, basically dust. You're doing so well. I raise my staff, and I go, teamwork makes the dream work. And then <laughs> I light it on fire. <laughs> the place goes up almost instantly as the fire starts to spread from the looser webbing around the edge into the building and then down into the cellar. I should have said dangerously cheesy. No, it was cheesy enough. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Even the people who were completely dead asleep are starting to like wiggle and everybody seems okay. There's definitely a ton of scars on Nugget that weren't there before, but everybody's like, oh you know, he's God. fine. He's walking. I'm not fine. <laughs> I'm not fine either, but what's a day without a casualty? All right, let's go. Um, Osron's scanning the crowd, and his three kids run up to him. None of them are older than six. Wait, are those little tiefling babies? I grab Yue's wrist, and I drag her over to Osron, and I say, is now a good time? <laughs> Osron's got one tear in the corner of his eyes. He's hugging his kids. <laughs> And he looks over at you, and, and he's like, Kids, these two and, and the elf over there saved your father's life. And they did it out of the kindness of their hearts. And then the village lady who you talked to was like, Here's all the gold between the entire village. <laughs> and we just tore down the church. You can have the wood from that. Thank you, Lilith. You can keep the gold. Uh, why don't you go talk to Kanar? And I shoot Lilith. Yes, honor, glory. It's not really what we need. It's out of our pure, true hearts. Where's your mum? <laughs> she was in the building. No. Uh, <laughs> I would die. She's not. Um, she's not with us. I like your horns. This is my youngest. She is turning four in one week. I like your horns too. I think they're very pretty. And she uh, smiles and blushes. You're the first tieflings I've ever seen. Really? Yes. That surprises me, but I hope that we didn't disappoint. I give each kid like three gold coins, and then the one whose birthday I go, happy extra birthday, give them an extra once, and I look at hot, sexy dad, <laughs> and I say, here's for your home. Please, you don't owe us anything. You I think you've done much more for me than I did today. You're welcome here anytime. I will take that up for grabs once I get something very important to me. So uh, see you in a little bit. Mo comes up behind her and picks, like, a giant glob of bloody goop out of her hair and then puts her arm around her shoulder and kind of leads her back to Kind of like, bye! If I get a shell phone, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your horns are pretty. <laughs> Mo, you have to teach me about men. So, Kanar, Arist comes up and says, your reward, and slaps, like, a big bag of gold to you that's in, like, this fancy case. Who are you people? We are... 
Not important. <laughs> Nothing to see here. You've never seen us before. You know what? Bye. Is that a carpenter's mark on your arm? It is. You are quite a carpenter, sir. How do you... I am Gamunzi. I'm from your nation. I'm not from your village, but I have heard of it. Do you also have a mark? No. Our people don't really do that uh, tradition. I find it admirable that you can... Uh, to each his own, is what I say. You probably heard the legend saying that as a carpenter, I'm supposed to do this for the rest of my life, but that's, that's not what I'm after. Do you know of the adventures, Mark? I don't believe I've heard of it, but you've just done some adventuring today. I never thought of it that way. I turn and I see Kanar still talking and I go, Kanar, can we leave, hey, please? Hey, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> tell, you, tell you about something. What? I'm like a little conflicted about telling you this because like... I don't know. I don't know what the right thing is. I feel like I always make the wrong decision when it comes to this stuff. So, Burnt Bill. Great guy. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my. Okay. Um, He suggested that the two of us should turn you in to get money. And, like, I obviously did not say yes to that. But I also didn't kick him off the boat because then he could go out and he could tell people like where you are. I what do you want me to do? I don't know. I'm just telling you because when I didn't tell you, you got mad. So now I'm telling you, but now I feel like you're mad again. And I don't know what to do. Teach me how to be a person. If you take one look at me and one look at you, do you think either of us know how to be a real person? (laughs) I have had a long day and I'm conflicted because one burnt bill has saved all of our lives and I do know it's a great sum of riches I mean as long as we have him on the boat I mean who's he gonna sell me to Durban (laughs) aye aye captain he does seem to like staying with the ship (laughs) um (laughs) Kanar as you are walking back with Eris uh, Nugget has come up and chatted with you as well. Hey, Nugget. We thought we were the least lucky people in the Southern Isles, but you rescued all of us. We're from four different nations. News of what you've done will travel everywhere. No, um, we're traveling really low key, so it would be best if it just kind of stayed a legend within the town here. So like a legend in Sylvia. Yeah. Like a Sylvia legend. Yeah. And so you guys have reached the dock and Eris sees the ship and she's like, oh, the adventurer's mark, like you were saying. Yeah. That is a really nice ship. Brand new. There's so many ways you could add on to that ship too, like upgrades and Exactly. Such. That's what I've been trying to tell them. I finally, I, someone sees it. Actually, I have a good friend, a shipwright. It's just in the city over. We could go and see him. I owe you my life. Well, how long will this trip take? It's about four or five days from here, but four I honestly, five. it's southeast, on the way out to the Wild Sea, and I can bring you there, get you a deal on the shipwright, pledge myself to be in the protection of your crew. Wait, Nugget, in the you want to come with us? I'll show you the way there. Oh my god, Nugget's going to give me nightmares. Nugget. <laughs> it's not that burned. Oh <laughs> Nugget, my god. We have to stop every week anyway to get more food so as your very supportive friend if you want to stop at that port i mean nugget we're doing something and you would have to get off at that port you're good with that you're good staying wherever that is absolutely i think we should keep him and no, he will help great. maintain the ship with why don't we Bill. just keep him for now you guys for he's now. not offering for us to keep him he's not another durban he's going to take Kinar to a shipwright and then he's gonna get off the boat <laughs> so yeah you guys load up onto the ship and the whole town is seeing you off and they're going adventurers mark the adventurers mark Aww. the adventurers mark not all that's, so that's dangerous for you we may have to repaint our ship but do you see those three little tieflings right there the <laughs> and then the two of you you guys feel uh, heavy hands on your shoulders and it's tor the half work oh. who is who's aboard he's Go stuck on the boat Roger. it's too late we're already <laughs> and he says uh oh, something aren't we i load up the gear i mean for the most part Hey, Horny, could you actually just wrap that last bit? Hey, hey, man, we... No. We, we, hey, five no, of us. no. All right. You call me Horny. You don't call her Purple, and you don't call her Horny, <laughs> and then she uh, pushes him overboard. Cool. <laughs> He's so violent. Right in front of all these He's people. So I didn't, I'm not violent. I didn't hurt him. He's just gone. He, he splashes into the water, and he's like, all right, Captain. <laughs> 
and Mo just flips him off. <laughs> Euphoria also flips him off. And you guys sail away. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody's characters feeling after episode f f f f Five. Well, Mo does not like all these extra people that her DM is trying to add to the crew. I don't know what your angle is with that, but like we have UA being chased. I am on the run from an entire pirate ship that has said that I'm their captain until I die. Sure, it would be nice to have extra hands around to protect you. No, it wouldn't be. (laughs) Uh, Kanar is a bit confused about like how Mo is just legit getting rid of people. Uh, He sees the value in extra hands on the ship. But does he not see the danger of extra mouths on the ship? Kanar does not see the danger, no. True. (laughs) But no, other than that, Kanar Kanar feels really cool uh, this episode. Did some damage. He had a whole like actual character moment with that elf. Oh well, I mean, you know, he's more excited about the damage, but with, <laughs> I don't think he's fully realized that his life right now is what it, it always wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he's gonna be able to explore that soon. You is everywhere right now. <laughs> she really is. This is really. It was wild. a full day for you. Full day. She's confused right now because she's this deep evil thing. She always thought to her core, and she's. Feel so much love for the both of you. And and instead of going straight into a battle, she saves somebody first. And those kids, like, she was, like, so... There's more tieflings. There's she's, there's a lot. UA was on such a high of meeting other tieflings and winning this battle. And Dude, my first initial reaction was, like, yeah, we're going to kill Burnt Bill. But then I thought, <laughs> I was, like... I was honestly, like, Moe's not going to like if I kill Burnt Bill. So for now, this is what I'm going to do. I do want to say before we log off that our discussions that we have about our characters and what happened in the episode are a lot longer than what you hear in this. And we usually put the rest on pizza time. So if you like us, like dissecting characters and uh, go on Patreon. D&D, bro. D&D. D&D. Go on Patreon for extended character episode talk. Thanks, everybody. Happy roll for it. Peace out. Happy roll for it. I like that. So Tor the half work climbs his way up onto the dock, soaking wet. He's still got eight layers of clothing on. And then he pulls a <laughs> sheet of paper from his side pocket, and it's taped together. Oh, no. And it says, Euphoria, wanted. <laughs>